How do we measure forecast accuracy? To measure forecast accuracy, we'll use three quantities, mean squared error, MSCE, mean absolute deviation, MAD, and mean absolute percentage error, MAPE. They represent the average amount of error, so the lower these quantities are, the better the forecasts are. So let's take an example. I want to show you how to compute these quantities. The following table shows the actual sales of upholstered chairs for a furniture manufacturer and the forecast made for each of the last four months. Calculate the MSC, MAD, and MAPE. So in month one, uh, demand was 200 and the forecast was 225. Now we are at the end of month four and we want to evaluate how accurate these forecasts were. So we want to compute MSE, MAD, and MAPE. First, we need to compute the forecast error. The forecast error is defined by the demand minus the forecast. So uh, what's the forecast error for the first month? Demand 200 minus the forecast, 225. So it's minus 25. Next, uh, demand minus the forecast equals 20. Next, demand minus the forecast is uh, 15. And demand minus the forecast is minus 20. So uh, let's try to understand the meaning of each error. So the first error was minus 25. What's the meaning of this? That means the forecast was 25 away from the actual demand. Was the forecast higher than demand or lower than the demand? Let's look at the sign of this error. The sign of this error is minus negative. So, um, demand minus forecast was negative. Does that mean demand is higher or forecast was higher? The forecast was higher and uh, it was 25 above the actual demand. So likewise, let's go to the second error. The second error was 20. That means the forecast was 20 away from the actual demand. Was the forecast higher or lower than the, than the actual demand? It was lower than the actual demand. So we have four errors, and we want to have a single value that represents all of them. How can we compute a single value that represents all of these numbers? How about averaging them? So we add them up and divide it by 4. What's wrong with this? When we average these numbers, the positive values and the negative values cancel out each other. And what we really want to do is compute how far away the forecast is from the actual demand. We don't care whether the forecast is above or below the, uh, the, uh, the, the demand. What we care about is how far away they are from the actual demand. So in other words, we're only interested in the absolute value of the error. So we want to drop the signs. How can we drop the signs? There are a couple of ways to do this. First, we can compute the absolute error. We can just uh, delete the signs. Or we can square the errors. It, because if you square a negative number, you get a positive number. If you square a positive number, you get another positive number. So that way we can drop the sign. So first of all, let's square the errors. So first error was minus 25 squared. So that's equal to 625. The second one, 20, uh, 625. The second one is 20. 20 squared is 400. And next one, uh, 15. So 15 squared is 225. The last one, minus 20. Minus 20 squared is 400. And then we can compute the average of squared errors. So add them up and divide it by 4. 
that's equal to 412.5 and that's e that's the MSE mean squared error. Now let's go to uh, the absolute error. So you can take the error and drop the sign. And let's compute the average of these absolute errors, add them up and divide by four, you get uh, 20, and that's called mean absolute deviation. And next, we want to compute the ratio of the absolute error to the actual demand, and we want to express it as a percentage, so we multiply it by 100%. So for the first month, you take the absolute error, which is 25, divided by the actual demand, 200, and the quantity times 100, that's equal to 12.5%. And we repeat this for the rest of the months. So take the absolute error, divided by the actual demand, multiplied by 100, that's 8.3%. So this way we get 5.0% and 7.4%. And then uh, we compute the average of these percentages, add them up, divided by four, we get 8.3%. And that's called MAPE, mean absolute percentage error. So this is how we compute these quantities. Next, I wanna make a couple of comments. First, I wanna make a comment on MAPE. When you compute the MAP, we divide the error by the demand. We take the actual demand, uh, we take the, uh, take the error and divide it by the actual demand, and we express it as a percentage. So why do we do this? To illustrate this, uh, I want to give you an example. Let's say we observe the demand and forecast, uh, forecast error in two periods. So in the first period, demand was 100, the error was 100. In the next period, demand was 1,000 and the error was 100. So in which period do you think we made a more accurate forecast? Do you think the forecasts are equally good because we have the same amount of error? No. The forecasts were more accurate in the second quarter, second month, because in the first period, the error was the same as the demand. The error was 100% of demand. In, in the second quarter, the error was only one-tenth of the demand, which, may, which is 10% of the demand. So it's more reasonable to say that we made more accurate forecasts in the second period. So what's the lesson we learned from this? What we really need to look at is not the absolute amount of error, we have to look at the ratio of the error to the actual demand. This is more reasonable. And that's why we're computing this ratio. And the next comment I wanna make is MA, MAD and MSE. What's the difference between the two? In MAD, we uh, average the absolute errors. And in MSE, we average the squared errors. So let's compare them. So uh, we have two periods and we applied two forecasting methods. And uh, the error from the fir first method was 60 and 60. And the error made from the second method was one and 100. So which forecasting method is better? So to compare these two methods, we want to compute MAD and MSE. So how can we compute the MAD? Let's compute the average error, 60 and 60, the average is 60. How about this, one and 100? Uh, so the average of this is 50.5. So according to MAD, which method is better? 
method two, that because it's producing a lower error. Now let's compute MSE. So what's the uh, MSE of the first method? You square the error and average them. That's 3600. And what's the MSE of the second method? You square the error and average them. You get 5000. Point five. So according to MSE, which method is better? This one. This one produces a lower error. So we have a conflicting result. So why is it this happening? In MAD, we take the absolute error and average them. And in MSE, we compute the squared error and average them. And when we square a value, we are making a large value much larger. So for example, if you square two, two squared is four, so the value has increased by two. If you square 10, 10 squared is 100, so this value has increased by 90. So if you square a large value like 10, we are making, making it much, much larger. And we're placing more and more emphasis on large errors. So when we compute MSE, um, you will see a smaller MSE when your data set has moderate sized errors throughout the periods. And you'll see a larger MSE when you see a particularly large value uh, because MSE penalizes large errors more seriously. We are making this large error much, much larger. So uh, MAD treats all the errors equally, but MSE treats large, large errors more seriously. So which one should you use? It depends on your situation. If you pre prefer to have moderate-sized moderate errors throughout the periods, you should use MSE because MSE penalizes large errors more seriously.